by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, present The Lone Ranger. Fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail Silver. Away! Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen... Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Carl Anson, outlaw leader, looked up expectantly as one of his men entered the two-room settler's cabin, which was used as a hideout. Well, Jack, what brings you back from town in such a rush? Two things, Carl. First... I heard a deputy marshal from south of here telling the sheriff a certain masked man who helps the law was out to trail the Anson gang. What? Yeah. And second, a message came through from Pedro. He's on his way here to join us. Here. Here's the message. Thanks. Jack Drake, care of station master, Lakeland, Texas. How do you know your name? Well, I reckon Jim told him. I never met Pedro, but Jim knew him in prison. Uh, now, let's see what he says. A mutual friend tells me you work for a man who might have a job for me. I shall arrive his place in a day or two. Jim has told me how to get there. I'll bring a note from him to identify me. Pedro Hanos. What about the mass man? I know all about him. Rides with an Indian. Uses a big white stallion. The Indian rides a paint. If they're getting on our trail, we'll have to do something about it pronto. What can we do? I doubt if they've arrived in this territory yet. We'll fix it so that when they do arrive, they'll run into trouble. How? I'm tall like that masked man. So it's up to you to get a white horse and the paint along with an engine. After that, I'll tell you and the others my plan. That night, the entire gang of eight men were gathered in the living room of the cabin. Hey, Jack. Where's Carl? He'll be here soon. What's he planning for tonight? Yeah, what's going on? Just wait and see. Reach out! Oh, hey, well, hey, look, a mess out. An Indian with him. Take it easy, men. That's Carl. That's Carl. Yes, sir, I fooled you that time. What's the idea? Well, a certain mask I'm bringing his Indian friend are heading for this territory to get a line on us for the law. I aim to get them in wrong with the law before they get here. Nice. Now get your horses and hit leather. I want to leave for town right away. All right. All right. Later that night, the express clerk in Lakeland looked up as two figures entered. Uh, well, a masked man and an Indian. Three, what, sir? This is 
to hold uh, him. I'm reaching. Tie him while I keep him covered. Mm, me tie him tight. The Indian quickly tied and gagged the clerk. Then he and Carl emptied the safe of its contents. As they were leaving, Carl made sure to open the door wide a moment so the white horse and the paint were in the clerk's line of vision. So long, mister. By the time somebody finds you, we'll be far away from here. Come on, Indian. Mm, Half an hour later, a customer entered the office and released the clerk, who immediately reported the robbery to the sheriff. You say they were masked men and an engine? That's right, Sheriff. Yes. The masked man was a tall, well-built hombre. When they opened the door to leave, I caught sight of a white horse and a paint outside. You put catfish. It doesn't seem possible. What doesn't? I was uh, just thinking out loud. I'll form a posse and try to pick up the trail of those hombres. Carl and the others expertly covered their trail. So the sheriff and his posse gave up the search and returned to town. Meanwhile, in the hills outside of Rockton, a town 20 miles south of Lakeland, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail northward. As they rounded a bend, a horseman with drawn gun barred their way. Stop where you are, senor. It's your cover. Oh, oh. Oh, I have noticed you have been behind me for many miles, senores. I say to myself, maybe they are following Pedro. Then I remember something. A masked man, an Indian who helped the law, put my friend Jim Pender into prison. So you're a friend of Pender's, huh? But of course, amigo. And I have decided to settle things for him with you and that Indian. I will not wait any longer. This is it. Hold it. Mm. Hit him in the shoulder. Ah, knocked out from fall. Search him, Tallow, and take his gun. Then we'll bandage his wounds. Uh-huh. Uh, here. Here, letter. Oh, let me see. Dear Carl, this will introduce Pedro Hanos, my former cellmate. He'll take my place in the gang. Pedro's a fine gunman and will do his part well, Jim. That note to outlaw leader... Sound like. Yes, I think so. To Carl Anson, the man whose gang we're hunting. Hmm. There's a crude map on the back of the note, evidently showing the way to Anson's hideout. You give note to Sheriff and Lakeland, maybe? Not right away. This man, Toto, I'll disguise myself to look like him. Take his horse and ride to the hideout as Pedro. Oh, that's plenty risky. I don't think so. You take him to the Sheriff in Rockton. When you meet me later, I'll be disguised as Pedro. Then we'll ride on to the territory near Lakeland. The sun was setting when the Lone Ranger, without his mask and disguised as Pedro, stopped on a low ridge overlooking the hollow in which the hideout cabin was located. Tonto went with him to get the location of the hideout. That must be the cabin, Tonto. Uh, you take Silver to the grove we saw and make camp there. I'll learn all I can about the gang, and I'll get in touch with you, and we'll notify the sheriff. Uh, Maybe wait. I'll mount Pedro's horse and ride down the slope. There's sure to be a guard near the cabin. Stay with Tonto, Silver. And me wait. See if you get by guard. <laughs> Do I look enough like Pedro to pass? Uh, uh, disguise plenty good. Take care of Silver. Adios. Come on. Tonto waited among the trees on the ridge with Silver and Scout as the Lone Ranger leisurely rode down the slope toward the cabin. The great horse Silver watched as his master rode toward the hideout and approached a gate where he stopped. A man appeared beside him, and after a moment or two, they saw the Lone Ranger dismount, and the two men walked toward the cabin. Ah, uh, get past guard, all right. And we go to camp. Come, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Tonto pitched camp after tying Silver to a nearby tree. Then the Indian went to the town of Lakeland for a few supplies. He dismounted at the hitch rack. Oh, stop. Oh, come on. Oh, Jesus. All right, reach engine. Don't move. Oh. Why you hold gun on me? You ought to know. I saw you enter in town on that paint, and I ran for the sheriff. I'm taking you to jail, engine, for your part in the express office holding up a couple of nights ago. Oh, that's not true. Me just come to town. Who you're talking in my office? Come on, start walking. Oh, 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 oh. 
A short time later, in the sheriff's office, Tonto tried to explain. It's not true. We hold up the express office. You mean you don't have a mask, friend, eh? Uh-huh. Me have friend to wear mask? Him Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, sir. Where is he now? Well, me... Me can't tell right now. Yeah, look, Indian. If you get that mask man here, and he proves what you say, all right. But until then, I'll have to take you into custody. I'm keeping you here in jail. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger had been accepted as Pedro Hanos by Carl Anson on the strength of his appearance and the note he brought. Carl was discussing the gang with him. Yeah, Pedro. Had two new men join up just the other day. Jim sent them to me, same as he did you. You have a large number of hombres in the gang, no? Ten, counting you and myself. <laughs> You seem to be clever enough to evade the law, Senor Carl. <laughs> we have the local sheriff running around in circles. Carl, can I speak to you a minute? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back, Pedro. See. Si. Let's step outside. What's up, Jack? The engine who rides with a masked man has been caught and put in jail. Oh, so they reach this territory, huh? Yeah. The engine won't tell where the masked man is. He's still on the loose. Well, <laughs> don't worry. You'll be concerned about getting his Indian friend out of jail. But we'll keep our eyes open in case he comes snooping around. Make sure somebody's guarding the front and back approaches of this camp. Right. And uh, no use saying anything in front of Pedro. All huh? right, boss. And Jack just brought a little news from town, Pedro. <clears throat> Something private. But of course, senor. Oh, uh, by the way, Pedro... If you ever meet a mask hombre on a big white stallion with fancy riding gear, don't hesitate a second. Just draw and shoot to kill. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. there, get a load of this terrific offer. Now you can get a copy of a real, genuine, original Confederate bill free in each specially marked package of Cheerios. There are nine different bills in the whole set, ranging from $1 to $1,000. And each bill looks so much like the original Confederate bill, you can hardly tell the difference. Say, won't you and your gang have fun with these? As I said, one bill comes free with each special Cheerios package. No waiting, nothing to send in. It's right at your grocer's. If you get a $2 bill in your first package, you may get a $500 bill in the next, and so on. It's easy to collect the whole set of nine different bills, and I bet you'll want to be the first in your neighborhood to have them all. And you'll have something else that's good, too. Cheerios. Seems everybody loves that wonderful toasted oat flavor, and everybody needs the go power Cheerios gives. Remember now, inside each special Cheerios package, there's a copy of a real, genuine Confederate bill. Start collecting yours today. Now, to continue. At the camp Tonto had made the previous evening, the Lone Ranger's loyal horse, Silver, waited patiently for the Indian's return. As time went on, Silver became restless. <laughs> It was only on rare occasions that he was tied to a tree as he was now, and never before had his wants been neglected. Hours passed, and he became lonely and very thirsty. Whenever he heard distant footsteps, he lifted his ears expectantly. But Tonto and Scout didn't return, and most of all, he missed the nearness and companionship of his beloved master. Morning came. And still the white stallion waited, alone. His love and trust for the Lone Ranger was great, and he sensed that something was wrong. He had been trained to wait patiently at times, but this was different. Finally, Silver's desire to find and be with his master was more than he could suppress. He gnawed at the rope which held him to the tree until it parted. Then, remembering where he had last seen the Lone Ranger, he galloped from the camp. At the hideout, 
Carl was talking to his right-hand man, Jack. Jack, what do you think of the three hombres Jim sent us? Well, I've been watching them, Carl. Seem to be all right. Each of them is tall, well set up, and <laughs> according to Jim, quick on the draw. Yeah, Jim knows how to pick them all right. Well, tonight they get their first workout with the gang. What are you planning to do? Clean out the bank in town, and we'll leave this territory. Well, I'll join the others and tell them to be ready for the night. I'll go... Hey, hey, look, through the window. What are you looking at? A big white stallion coming down the slope toward the gates. But nobody's in the saddle. Well, the guard's stopping them at the gate. Let's go out and look them over. Move, steady, fellow. Move, move. Jack. I've seen that stallion before. Look at that fancy riding gear. He's the masked man's horse. Holy cats. The masked man must have been thrown or something. If we back back... No, back... I don't think anything happened to the masked man. His stallion wouldn't come here if something did. He'd go back to the Lone Ranger's camp. Well, then what do you make of it? I got a feeling this stallion came here because his owner is around here somewhere. How can that be? I'm beginning to think one of the three new hombres who joined us in the last few days is really the Lone Ranger. Oh, you loco. No, I'm not. Each one of us is tall and well-built. I'll get those three new hombres outside and have them line up. And when I call you, bring the horse. Then let him loose. I figure he'll go straight to his master. Meanwhile, at the town jail, Tonto thought of Silver tied back at the camp. Expecting to return immediately, he hadn't waited to unsaddle the stallion, nor had he fed him. He was deeply concerned, not only about Silver, but also because he realized the Lone Ranger might need his help. Finally, the Indian decided to take the sheriff into his confidence. Sheriff! Me talk now. Sheriff! You mean you tell where the Lone Ranger is? Ah, uh, me not tell before, because him say wait, but me not wait longer. Briefly, Tonto told what had taken place and where the Lone Ranger had gone. When he finished, the sheriff exclaimed, Great dear, what did you tell me before? If those government find out who he is, they'll plug him. Me think it good you get posse and go to hideout. That's what I'll do, and I'll take you along to show the way. If this is a trick... If not trick, sheriff, me tell true. All right, then. I'll get you out of there. the hideout, Carl entered the back room where the men were lounging. Pedro, I want you, Pete, and Joe to come outside. Of course, Senor Carl. The rest of you come along, too. I'm going to try an interesting experiment. Pedro, Pete, and Joe, go outside and set up a target against a big cottonwood tree that you see out the side window. I want to see how well you men can shoot. I'll meet you at the side of the cabin in a few minutes. Just as you say, Senor. Come along, Pete, Joe. Right. Listen, the rest of you. Come out there and be ready to draw when I give the signal. One of those hombres is really the Lone Ranger. What? what? How do you know? Which one is he? You'll soon find out. Come on. A few moments later, Carl lined the Lone Ranger and the other two new men against the west wall of the cabin facing the target. The rest of the gang stood watching them expectantly. Then Carl called out, Jack! We're ready. Right. Hold it, hold it, hold it. At the sight of Silver, the Lone Ranger realized what was about to happen. The great stallion was looking at his master and straining to be free as Jack and Carl held his bridle. The Lone Ranger tensed, but made no outward show of his feelings. Now, men, one of those three new hombres is a Lone Ranger who came here to help the law catch him. And this stallion is going to show us which one. Now, cover him, men. And all three of you reach. Go on, reach! This is strange treatment, Senor Carl. Think so, Pedro? Well, this stallion is mighty loyal to his master. And because of that loyalty, he's going to betray him to us. All right, Jack. Let him go. <laughs> the great horse, little realizing that he was betraying his master by his loyalty, walked forward. And with a whinny of delight, nuzzled the Lone Ranger's shoulder. <laughs> Pedro's the one. Keep him covered. Well, let's shut him. Get a him with lead. Don't wait. That's for me to do. I've waited a long time. And this is it. Hold it. No. Like Get lightning, on. the Lone Ranger drew and fired from the hip, wounding Carl in the gun arm. Get him. Get him. Oh, Before the men could shoot, the sheriff and his posse rode in fast, firing as they approached. 
The outlaws turned in panic to fight off the oncoming party. As the posse rode in, on, the Lone Ranger ran around the corner of the cabin, leading Silver out of the line of fire. From his vantage point, the masked man opened fire on the outlaws, putting them between him and the posse. After several of the outlaws were wounded, they realized they had no chance and finally threw down their guns. Wait, wait, we give up, we give up. Get their guns and keep them covered, then. You all right, Kimasabi? Yes, Tonto. The silver came here. Let me and I... tell you about that. Tato told the Lone Ranger what had happened and how he had finally decided to tell the sheriff about the Lone Ranger's plan. It's a good thing you did tell the sheriff, Tato. The posse arrived just in time. Mister, you sure don't look like I think the masked man should look. How do I know that you're the Lone Ranger? Uh, this letter is signed by the governor will identify me, Sheriff. Here, yeah, let me see. Yes, yes. See, this is good enough for me. We would have shot down that Lone Ranger, Carl, if you hadn't insisted on doing it yourself. Oh, shut up. Don't tell me to shut up. You're the one who thinks he's so doggone smart. You figured that by posing as a masked man and robbing the bank the other night, you'd get him into trouble. But he turned out to be smarter than you are. Well, that's he, then. Hanson's the one who posed as a masked man in that hole of uh-huh. I'm sorry, Injun, for holding you in jail. That's that all right. Him in. Manage their wounds and we'll get them to jail. Right, Some of you keep them covered every minute. Sheriff, you seem to have enough men to handle them. Yes. I'll go back to camp with Tonto and get rid of this disguise. We'll stop in to see you before we leave the territory. Adios, everyone. Adios. 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 Well, by golly, there goes a real man. Seems like he fooled Anson and his men aplenty. Someday, crazy galoots like you crooks are going to realize you'll never get the best to the Lone Ranger. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. You'll never get discouraged if you keep in mind champions are made, not born. Let's see how Tom Fears, past catching end for the Los Angeles Rams, got on his way. At 12, Tom played football a lot, and many a bump is what he got. But he kept trying, never quit. And here's what helped to keep him fit. He ate his Wheaties every bit. Today, Tom sparks those touchdown drives. It's Wheaties still on which he thrives. Wheaties to Fears, there's a past combination that's been clicking steady now for 19 years. Real energy in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Tom, snag that pass. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendel Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.